So your raptor has let the floodgates open. Episode 2 of the behind the scenes on Assassin's Creed Shadows has been leaked for quite some time, but now YouTubers are finally starting to make videos on this content. So I'm going to presume it's safe to throw my hat in the ring as well. Of course, before Assassin's Creed Shadows got delayed, we were expected to get these behind the scenes videos every couple of weeks, giving us insights into the making of and the dev teams talking about Assassin's Creed Shadows. And since it's been delayed, these videos are probably not going to come out until the new year. But China didn't get the memo. And so for a couple of weeks, it's been floating around on the internet, this Chinese leaked version of the trailer in full HD. And you might be thinking, well, Mr. Willis Makes Movies, you're looking a little bit different. Well, that's because I've finally brought my camera home from work. Yes, a lot of my day-to-day -day job is using my camera for photography, so I take my own camera in. But I thought, you know what? The channel's doing really well. I want to give some upgrading quality. So I've decided to bring my camera home and I'm going to be swapping it out for the webcam. If people like it, if you like this camera angle as opposed to it being on top of my desktop, let me know what you think, let me know any adjustments you think I should make, and without further ado, let's dive into episode 2. Episode 2 is focused around the world design in Assassin's Creed Shadows, and this is something that the developers have been focusing on massively in previous trailers. You can tell that one of the main selling points of Assassin's Creed Shadows is the world that you're going to be exploring. They've made a really big focus on the environment changing throughout the seasons and how that affects the gameplay. This is something that we've seen as early as Assassin's Creed 3, where Connor and Hatham would trudge through the snow a little bit slower if it was snowy. They wouldn't be able to move as quickly when chasing targets. And we saw that as early as sequence three in that game. And strangely, it's a mechanic that never really came back in Assassin's Creed. I mean, even in Assassin's Creed Rogue and Valhalla, you're moving pretty quickly and there's not that much dense snow. You can see in Shadows that they've made a real effort to bring back that level of immersion, which I really do appreciate, and I think we're going to see it play more into the gameplay. The way that you handle certain scenarios will depend on the time of year that it takes place in, and I think this is going to give players variety in the way that they play the game. You're not going to have the same experience as your friend, and that could also play a part in the co-op. Maybe you're finding that a certain mission is too difficult during the winter because you're not able to scale buildings without like sliding off or something. So you hop into co-op with your friend and he's doing it during the spring. So it makes it easier for you to achieve. That's just a theory that could be quite cool. I know this is jumping the gun a bit, but I would love if after the game's finished, you can control what season it is in order to tackle certain gameplay scenarios or like a final skill that you unlock at the end of the game, something tied with maybe the spiritual collectibles like in the mini games. That would be kind of cool. That's just my thoughts on that. But in terms of the changing seasons, I'm really happy with it. It makes the game feel more immersive and I'm, I'm on board. Regarding the actual look of the world in Shadows, I think Feudal Japan looks really good and we'll see a little bit more of that later but now we need to move on to something really important and that is further glimpses at the story we actually get to see the behind the scenes of some of these more capped cut scenes and we get to see how they're gonna look in the game and just knowing that there is more cap being done at all makes me really happy and i'm really relieved because it looks really good from what we can see from the more capped scenes I think this is when Nawir's village is getting attacked by Yasuke and all of those other samurai and she's like creeping up on him to save some people and I think that's meant to be Yasuke or maybe one of the guards that she's sneaking up on and you can see she has like a confrontation, she's holding her sword out, she's she's speaking, there's a bit of a, a back and forth there and when we see this in the actual game, it looks like a really good cutscene. Only criticism I have about that scene is is that we kind of expected it. Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Assassin's Creed Valhalla were games that relied a lot on back and forth conversations that weren't more capped, they were very stiffly animated. 
but what they did have was really good opening sequences. The scene where you play as Leonidas at the beginning of Odyssey is absolutely breathtaking. It's such a fantastic way to open that game. And Valhalla 2, in its first couple of hours, has a lot of more capped sequences. You have the, the sequence with Eivor as a child, where their parents get killed. It's, it's like, it's a very cinematic moment, and it's something that Assassin's Creed always delivers on, is putting you right in the heart of the action at the beginning of the game, and I can see that following on with Shadows. What I want to see is this continue throughout the entire game. Keep up the pace. Don't let it slow down to a crawl where people are wanting to just skip through these back and forth cutscenes because they're boring. I just don't want the conversations to be boring. And thankfully we did get another cutscene with Nawir and her mentor. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but that also looks like quite a good scene. It's back and forth, yes, but what they're talking about is really interesting. There's some different angles and it makes the conversation look more interesting and... It reminds me of Odyssey. I think Odyssey had like a free cam. It had like different camera angles and not like Valhalla where it is literally just back and forth and then a wide shot. Odyssey did mix things up. It had dynamic camera angles. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> it had dynamic camera angles and that seems to have been brought back in shadows. I'm very happy with the quality of the texturing. I mean, now it, it, it looks incredible. It looks really next generation. It's just the facial animations that I think Ubisoft obviously have struggled with a lot recently, and they still look like they need to do a little bit of catch-up, but when the faces aren't moving, they look incredible. And of course, the main big reveal from this trailer was the settlement building mechanic. Now, we knew we knew with the Ultimate Edition of Assassin's Creed Shadows that you were going to get extra goodies for your settlement, but now we sort of have a good idea of what that's going to look like with this base building mechanic, which looks incredible to me. Like, this was a massive surprise for me because I never thought we were getting anywhere near the amount of depth that we have gotten in this trailer. I can see myself designing this base for, like, tens of hours and completely forgetting about anything else in the game because I'm fixated on making my settlement and I hope that there's ways of upgrading it and integrating it into the other gameplay and I think that might be the case. For example, we've seen that when they zoom out to the map and they show particular areas of the map that you want to discover, like a settlement where you need to assassinate a target, you can send your assassins in to scout out the area, maybe to put some icons on your map to give you a helping hand, or to take out enemies. Who knows? This could work very similar to the eagle mechanic that we've seen from Origins through till Mirage. I don't know if there's an eagle in this game. We may be returning back to eagle vision, or using your shinobi recruits to naturally scout out ahead and give you those extra little bits of information that Ekendir or Senu or those eagle characters would have given you in previous games. And this could mean that as you upgrade your settlement, your shinobi recruits are able to unlock more abilities. And it makes it more integrated with the gameplay because you upgrade your settlements, it makes clearing camps easier because it gives you more preparation with your recruits. This is an element that they have never like, suggested before this leak came out. We had no idea that the settlement system was this detailed. We had no idea that the shinobi recruits were in them, were even in the game, outside of an Instagram post. This is absolutely the video that a lot of people are going to need to see to give them an idea that, yes, Assassin's Creed Shadows will have something for everyone, and I think it's going to have even more hidden details that we haven't seen yet. I'm also a massive fan of how they've changed the synchronization points. The fact that you're not constantly bombarded with information on your screen like in Assassin's Creed Unity where the map is like cluttered with collectibles and you can't even see any of the, the, the buildings or anywhere, that, like the streets. But this looks a lot more clean, more simple, it looks easier to follow, to plan your routes. And it looks like you're going to discover information and, and landmarks and parts of the world a lot more organically. You're going to discover it by, surprise surprise, exploring the world. Not like in Valhalla where you go up to a sink point and you see all these glowing lines on the screen and you think, well, what what is this? What does it lead to? Is this gold thing going to lead me to a piece of gear? Or is it going to lead me to just some 
ingots. Shadows looks like it's focusing a lot more on ergonomically involving you in the exploration, which we saw with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where you had to go to objectives based on the information that the game gave you. If you didn't follow the guided mode, you would be told where your next objective is. It's at the southwest corner of this island, and you had to go and discover it yourself. And I can see the benefits that it brought to some players, and some players will have absolutely loved that and gotten immersed in that idea, in that way of playing. It's a different way of playing video games instead of just being told where to go. And that, in turn, makes you feel more connected to the world, like it is a real, breathing, living world. So yeah, I've known about this for a good couple of weeks now, but, and I think that's probably what's allowed me to formulate my opinion a little bit more, but when I saw this, it was just after Assassin's Creed Shadows got delayed, and it was the video I needed. It was that, that sense of, like, it, it simmered me down. I was, I was very emotional when Assassin's Creed Shadows did. I was like, oh my god, have they dropped the ball on this? Is the game done? Is it cooked? Is it done? Is, is it even going to come out? But then I saw this developer diary, and hopefully now you can see it too. I assume it's going to be officially released really soon now because we've had this leak and now everybody's talking about it. I hope that you get a chance to watch this video, and I hope it puts your mind at rest. It certainly did so for me, and I'm looking forward to episode three. I want to see what else they've got in store. What else are they hiding? We don't even know if there's ships in this game. What do you think about this leak? How does it make you feel towards Assassin's Creed Shadows? Does it change your opinion, or are you still in one camp or another? Let me know down below. Let me know what you think of the new setup. <laughs> and if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like, subscribe for more Assassin's Creed content, and I will see you in the next video. Wow, the camera is so much further away now. I can't... I look like I'm just... Wait. I will see you in the next video. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I've got so much room to breathe. <laughs>